fall asleep fast with this calm bedtime story for grown-ups. You're listening to Run Away to Cappadocia, a sleep story set in the magical Anatolia region, rife with natural wonders. Under the guidance of a young man named Ennis, you travel by hot air balloon above historic villages and fairy chimneys during a rare sunset voyage. You spend the evening on a rooftop overlooking the panoramic vista of homes and pigeon houses carved into towering rock formations. The starry sky and crescent moon in this exotic location invoke hope. You return to your cave suite adorned with Turkish treasures and antiques and fall into a deep sleep. It's time to dream away. I would like to welcome you to Michelle's Sanctuary. My name is Michelle, and as you listen, think of me as the voice of a dear friend and ally looking out for your needs. You deserve a night of sleep and respite. For the history of humankind, bedtime offers sacred moments of winding down and setting the tone for the dreamscape to come. As you listen, customize your experience in a way that works best for you. Rather than using your imagination to worry, you may activate your creative mind to conjure soothing images that make you feel good. One thought can be the ticket to a mental vacation that fulfills your deepest yearnings. You may let go of my voice at any point and fall asleep. Before we take flight, use this moment to settle into your bed. Appreciate the walls around you that offer protection as you tune into the sanctuary of your room, body, and mind. This is a place for dreaming and connecting with the deepest parts of yourself. Feel your body become heavy as it sinks into the support of your pillows and bed. Open your mouth and yawn. You may fake a yawn until it becomes real and then enjoy a generous sigh. When you are ready, inhale slowly. As you do, imagine the air of your room becomes arid like the climate of Anatolia, punctuated by the sweet, vegetal notes of desert flora, by Turkish spices, and steeped tea. Your chest expands like a hot air balloon until you can inhale no more. Open your mouth again into another yawn. Air cascades out of your mouth into a delicious sigh. Every choice you make right now informs your body that you are ready for deep, restorative peace. Your muscles release any tension Your nerve cells are regulated by the sense of calm and become like inflated rafts floating downstream. You recognize how much more relaxed you feel than moments ago. And you take one more round of conscious breathing at your preferred pace. Inhaling yawning, sighing. 
you surrender to feelings of bliss. You go deep within, cut off from the noise of the outside world. With your body and mind prepared, it's time for the story to begin. Do you remember a time when you wanted to run away? Do you remember the first time? Perhaps as a small child, feeling unheard or unseen, you engaged in fantasies that being on your own would give you the chance to live life on your terms. Maybe you would pack a small bag or grab your most beloved toy or blanket and set out in your mind to a place where you could eat whatever you wanted for breakfast or stay up as late as you desired. Perhaps you imagined a world where no one teased you for being different or thinking differently. Have you ever wanted to run away from the responsibilities of being an adult? If only for a little while, to remember who you are and what you love most about yourself. Such an escape is possible in Cappadocia or Cappadocia. In the small town of Goreme lived a boy named Ennis who was struck with a longing for freedom at a young age. Teased by older siblings, and dominated by much of his extended family, simply for being the youngest. He had his own ideas about who he was. His self-will and strong displays of emotions became kindling to their fiery fits of laughter at his expense. Ennis was a serious young boy it was never taken seriously. He watched the sun rise over Cappadocia from a jewel-toned woven rug atop the roof of his centuries-old home with caramel eyes as wide as saucers. As the sun revealed itself, dozens of hot air balloons would color the blue sky carrying international visitors. On starry nights, he would look out on the vista with his feet perched on the edge of the roof. Turkish lamps illuminated open windows with vibrant mosaic displays of sapphire, rainbow, emerald, teal, and scarlet light. As the moon rose on these mystical nights, the desert air smelled of delicacies sweetened with honey, black tea, and whiffs of cinnamon, cumin, cardamom, and mint from meals slow cooked in earthen ovens. Even in what was an exotic, evocative location for visitors who came from around the world, Ennis looked at the stars and knew there was so much more beyond the mountainous borders of Anatolia. One translation of Cappadocia is land of beautiful horses, and Ennis often envied the wild horses running free through the valleys. The villagers of Goreme had their own recollections of Ennis as a three- or four-year-old tyke, with his child-sized rolling luggage that he stubbornly hauled over loose rocks and historic stone steps on his theatrical quest to run away. The scraped-up rolling suitcase was a hand-me-down that made it through his five siblings before it became his. Neighbors would look after him, as would his mother, 
who hid in the shadows of homes carved into ignimbright rocks so that her boy would feel a sense of the independence he sought but still be safe. His family knew he would be home by dinner and often after a half hour of roaming familiar streets Ennis would return home with a sense of accomplishment and independence. He would excitedly recount his adventures with embellishments and small fibs to his grandfather as they sat perched on the roof together. For much of Ennis's life, his grandfather was the only one who seemed to understand his plights and support his unique storytelling. When finally old enough to see the world, Ennis traveled near and far for two years, picking up odd jobs wherever he landed. All the while he was in a race against time, with the impatience and fervor of youth. He kept moving from one city or town to the next, until he received word that his grandfather was not well. For many years, his grandfather ran a hot air balloon company that offered sunrise tours. Ennis had only been in the vessel once as a young child, and it was like a distant dream. The balloons were so ubiquitous in Goreme that to him they seemed commonplace and uninteresting. Ennis returned home to see the last of the spark in his grandfather's kind eyes. The old man requested his grandson ride along with him for what would be his last sunrise journey. His grandfather felt well enough and strong enough to bring Ennis to his favorite points above the volcanic rock formations and valleys of wild horses. He told stories of the travelers he met piloting the balloon, of proposals and anniversaries, of joyous milestones, and of souls who traveled around the world using money saved over a lifetime to make it to their small village. What seems simple to you, Ennis, is exotic and surreal to others. Perspective is everything. Look at the beauty of this valley. Smell the air. Feel it on your skin. This is home. For the first time, Ennis saw Goreme through his grandfather's eyes. This moment opened a portal to self-awareness. All the running he did was not from this beautiful landscape. It was from the way he felt about himself. That night he sat on the roof of his childhood home. A star shot across the sky. And Ennis remembered all the stars he wished upon hoping to one day leave this place. His wish came true, and he had seen all he dreamt of seeing, yet he still felt very much the same in ways he thought he wouldn't. And his thought of his own healing, as the night winds swept his thick black hair from his face, and he felt the same rush of energy he felt when he and his grandfather floated across the crystal blue sky. It was a feeling he was looking for all along. Not a place or a person, but the sensation of being in motion and feeling alive. 
The next morning, his grandfather kindly and without pressure gave Ennis the option to stay and take over his business. Or he could sell the vessel or rent it out and continue to travel the world. It took no more than a beat before Ennis enthusiastically responded that he would stay and share the beauty of Cappadocia with others for as long as it felt right. Never before had anything felt so right. You arrive in Kareme in the middle of a perfect afternoon on the cusp of autumn. The experience touches on all your senses. The air is temperate, and a soft wind blows through the historic streets of the village. The sounds of children's voices echoing on the hills, of haggling shoppers at market stalls, and music pouring out of cafes create a unique soundtrack. The aromas from Turkish spices from street markets and wet clay used to create unique pottery with colorful patterns and shades of teal, cobalt, burnt orange, butter yellow, and indigo permeate the air. Beaded curtains dangle in the entryways of small cafes where you enjoy a tea or a coffee made in silver pots as you sit on a plush divan. Walking through Cappadocia, you feel very much grounded by the tough formations made from volcanic rock thousands of years ago. Sand-hued domes take on the colors of the sky and reflect the white gold afternoon sun. Subterranean homes and chambers were commonplace long ago, as dwellers found ease in digging and carving out the rock. These dwellings have now become boutique hotels, decorated with exotic antiques and Moorish decor that offer a sense of opulence and vivacity. You check into your cave suite before meeting Ennis for the first time to enjoy a hot air balloon. Once checked into the hotel, you are ready to explore some more. The hospitality of Goreme is like no place you have ever been. The prideful locals love to share their traditions and the beautiful land and often greet you with a smile. The textures of Cappadocia leave impressions as your fingers grace the rugged texture of cave walls and lush fabrics made by local artisans. You peer into an atelier where artisans unwrap cocoons of silkworms that create threads for colorful silk scarves and rugs. A soft breeze blows into the studio, and the scarves and blouses on display flutter. Gareme has a hypnotic effect, and you feel as if you are drifting through a dream as you leave the heart of the village to meet Ennis, as you circle away from the bustling shops and boutique hotels, your attention turns to the kaleidoscope of hot air balloons drifting around the town. The balloons scatter the baby blue skies between wispy white clouds as delicate as silk strands. You recognize Ennis immediately 
from a photo he sent standing beside a royal blue balloon with a checkered pattern of marigold yellow, light blue, orange, red, and green. He stands tall, muscular, and has an easy demeanor as he casually leans against a dusty boulder. His long fingers move with the grace of a conductor as he waves to you. As you approach, he greets you by name and offers you a bottle of water. Your hand wraps around the cool beads of condensation formed on the bottle. You take a sip and are soothed from the last rays of warm afternoon sunlight. Ennis asks if you are ready to become part of the sky. You smile and nod. The question sounds even more poetic and playful when spoken in his accent. With a glint in his eyes, you recognize there is so much going on beneath the surface with this young man. And he guides you down a path to the valley where hot air balloons take off and land, bobbing with the graceful guidance of seasoned pilots. The visual steals your breath. These enormous bulbs are in brilliant shades of yellows, oranges, blues, purples, reds, and greens. The patterns vary from stripes to mosaics as the hot air balloons float above fairy chimneys and rocky hills. The facades of the cliffs showcase their history in many layers of rich hues that start as deep earthy reds to become the color of golden sand at the peaks. Ennis brings you to his grandfather's hot air balloon, which has been his for a couple of years now. He unlatches a metal clasp and opens a door into the wicker basket that could hold a dozen passengers, but a series of events led to last minute cancellations. And so you and Ennis are the only two on this vessel. His energy is patient and kind, and a team on the ground oversees the ascent and descent of each hot air balloon. You settle comfortably onto a bench seat and grip your hands around the woven edge of the basket. With his expertise, the vibrant balloon is soon in flight, drifting higher and higher up as the sun lowers towards the horizon. Other hot air balloons appear as silhouettes before the last of afternoon light. But as the sun lowers, and becomes a rich shade of amber. The colors of the balloons appear more vibrant in the rich cast of golden hour. The air is calm with a mere whisper of a breeze, offering the perfect conditions to navigate the balloon. The hot air balloon floats over jagged valleys and a sparkling river carved deep into the earth. The valleys below appear like green and earth-toned patchwork quilts made of grassy fields and desert rock. You soar above volcanic spires that rise towards the sky between golden hills resembling honeycombs and haystacks. The 
The preternatural landscape below is dreamlike. The fairy chimneys look like towers formed from the drippings of wet sand, set to dry like castles in the sun. A distant valley glistens like rose gold, with rocky formations the color of pink sand. As you travel farther from the villages, the rural landscape looks like what one may find on another planet. The fiery orange sunlight casts the peaks and valleys in Mars-like hues as the burner flames cast Ennis in gilded firelight. He asks if you are enjoying the ride and tells the story of his grandfather and of the joy he feels every time he soars above his homeland. You see the childlike glee on his face and feel a connection to your inner child. As a gentle breeze kisses your cheeks, and as the hot air balloon glides over Cappadocia, you are overcome with a sense of freedom and aliveness. It's the same feeling that comes when riding at full speed on a bicycle down rolling hills in the countryside. It reminds you of running unencumbered in your youth during the first hint of spring. It conjures a sensation of riding in a convertible with a top down on a balmy summer night beneath the stars. You realize something Ennis and his grandfather recognized long ago. The air makes one feel free. You revel in the freedom of a bird soaring across the sky. Anything is possible. This pleasurable sensation is rarely captured in your waking life. But you have felt it many times when flying in a dream. This is your escape your getaway, your moment to run away, and to experience so much hope and vivacity that you feel ready to return to your life with a new perspective. For a brief moment, as the hot air balloon safely drifts across the sky, Ennis extends his arms out and opens his heart towards the setting sun. He smiles with encouragement for you to do the same. And so you open your arms as if they are wings and close your eyes to feel the last of sunlight on your face. You feel every part of your exposed skin being touched by the air as the lightweight fabric of your attire gently billows. This feeling will stay with you throughout your life. The sensation of being free as you soar above one of the most majestic places you have ever been. The act of knowing nothing beyond the present moment. This experience satiates any desire to run away when life becomes too much. You are completely untethered and untied to the rituals and routines in life that do nothing to elevate your spirit. A 
As you float above Cappadocia, your spirits could not be higher. You inhale the sweet, dry air to feel a lightness in your chest. Your muscles are soft, like candle wax softened by the burners inside the balloon. Ennis recognizes the sense of peace that washes over you. It transmits a sense of peace through him. Together you have a wordless exchange where the sound of the flickering flames and the soft whistle of warm air filling the balloon are all that is heard. Blissful healing energy travels through both of you as you are grounded in deep gratitude for this beautiful day. Ennis captures a photo of you in a flood of rich sunlight. Your face is luminous and your mouth is open in a smile of awe, appreciation, and deep joy. This photo is a memento that you will return to often. This image of you untethered to the earth and floating in beauty will remind you that you are but one decision away from the sense of freedom and fulfillment you seek. Ennis navigates the hot air balloon towards the valley where a team awaits the return of balloons. As the sun dips beyond the horizon, the sky is ablaze in broad bands of sherbet orange, raspberry pink, magenta, and violet. The flames burn like incandescent lights, illuminating the balloons with a glow that appears brighter as twilight sets in and you descend towards the earth. The night is marked by hope, conjuring thoughts of fireflies and campfires, colorful Turkish lamps, and flickering candles. The themes of freedom and hope permeate your experience in the hot air balloon. Your eyes well with gratitude for all that has come before this moment in time, for the thousands of years it took to create the beauty around you. Some things just take time. Ennis carefully guides the hot air balloon towards a flatbed attached to a truck where handlers await and assist in the landing. Their confidence and precision have been crafted over time and enabled Ennis to heal the wounds he felt as an outsider. The many hours he spent learning how to pilot helped him find a community, helped him learn how to trust. You embrace Ennis and thank him for this magical night, and he thanks you for giving him another chance to sail through the sky. He gifts you a Turkish eye bead pendant comprised of sapphire blue 
and aquamarine glass strung on a piece of ivory ribbon. You run your fingers over the cool, smooth glass and he tells you it will offer protection. A shuttle waits to take you and other visitors back to their hotels and you turn to wave goodbye to Ennis one last time before you board. The sky becomes a milky shade of bluish gray as a thin veil of clouds wafts over the valley. On the ride to your hotel, you lean your head out the window and feel the wind on your face. Again, that feeling of freedom. At the hotel, you walk through the cavernous hallways, illuminated by gold candelabras and mobiles made of Turkish mosaic lamps. On closer inspection, you see the illuminated and mirrored tiles of the colorful and spherical lamps remind you of hot air balloons. You ascend the stairs to the rooftop where a colorful silk rug has been reserved for you by the hotel staff. Atop a mosaic table is an engraved golden tray that holds a dark blue and gold teapot with topaz crystals. It contains mint tea. A candle flame flickers inside a golden tabletop lantern. A basket of assorted fruit sits next to it. You settle onto an ottoman made of patches of vibrant burgundy, blue, lavender, gold, turquoise, and forest green fabrics. As you settle and get comfortable, you pour yourself a cup of mint tea and sweeten it with a touch of honey. The silky liquid is a solve for the dry night air and slips down your throat with a delightful cooling sensation. You inhale deeply and the fragrance makes you calmer than the calm you already were. The tough facades take on the navy blue hue of night times you feel as if you have fallen into a kaleidoscope, surrounded by twinkling vibrant colors and tapestries that glow in amber candlelight. You look out at the fairy tale skyline of slender peaks and caves, the same landscape that Ennis once ran from and secretly wish you could stay in this moment forever. Perspective is everything. The night becomes cool and you wrap a soft blanket around your shoulders. A young couple, an older couple, and a group of traveling friends occupy other spaces on the roof. Their murmurs create a soothing soundtrack that makes you feel connected while also in your own little world. You watch as lights slowly turn off and the windows of homes and hotels that surround you. Come sunrise, the balloons will take flight once more, 
and you will enjoy breakfast on the terrace, overlooking the colorful orbs as they inspire the dreamer inside all of those who venture into the skies. Tiredness creeps in and you descend the stairs into the cavernous halls that lead to your suite. The rugged stone walls are cool and you brush your hand across their grainy texture as if one touch could transfer all the history of this special dwelling to you. You enter your suite that is without windows and illuminated by sconces that line the cave walls. You remove your favorite pajamas from your luggage and they smell like home. A contrast to the lingering fragrance of incense and nutmeg. You peel back the silk duvet and crisp cotton sheets and climb into the bed. The room is cool, quiet, as all noise is dampened by the thick walls of the cave. It is the ideal setting for sleep. You flip a switch near the bed and turn off the lights. As your body sinks into the mattress, your mind returns to the imagery of dozens of hot air balloons floating above the unique landscape of Cappadocia. You feel a soft flutter in your heart feeling of love, followed by a warm sensation of appreciation. You drift towards the dreamscape that awaits you. For the first time in a long time, realizing it may be hard for even the most glorious of dreams to top the beauty you experienced in Goreme. You glide across the bridge to your sleeping life, letting go, surrendering as you welcome the peace and tenderness of this transition to sleep. Finding bliss, finding peace, finding respite, finding grace, finding sleep. It's time to dream away.